how should nations today be developing their game plans to compete in what Chris you've called the chip war? And to start with that, I, I wanted to give a little bit of context. So, um, about why I want to dig into that question in particular. In my own book, uh, Chris, uh, the Great Tech Game, uh, shaping geopolitics and the destinies of nations, I make an argument which is in many ways similar to one that I think underlies your book as well, which is that today technology, you obviously mentioned semiconductor industry in particular as the most critical of those technologies, how technology is today shaping the geopolitics and geoeconomics of our world. And the second piece of my argument in my book is that nations as a result, now much like in the industrial era in the past or the trading era or the colonial era or the agri eras in the past, need a game plan to compete. In what I call the great tech game, but you've called it, uh, in the case of the semiconductor industry, the chip war. And to me, if countries need to compete in that, they've got to have a game plan. And it's obvious also to me that that game plan cannot be a one-size-fits-all game plan, at least from the broader perspective of technology. Now, so the question for you, Chris, to get us started is, based on your extensive history of how various nations of the last several decades have thought of their game plans, to lead and compete in the chip war, how should nations be thinking of their game plan today? What are some of the key elements of that framework that they should be thinking about? Well, first off, thanks so much for, for having me on the podcast and, and really looking forward to this conversation. I, I think for nations thinking about their game plan, the first question to think through is where in the supply chain they've got a competitive advantage because the chip supply chain is not only about making chips, it's about designing them, it's about packaging them, it's about testing them, it's about producing the chemicals and software machine tools that are used in the production process. And I think far too often political leaders only focus on the manufacturing and miss the rest of the supply chain. And that's a mistake for a couple of reasons. Um, first is that it's often the case that the best businesses are not in the manufacturing, but in other segments of the supply chain. The chip design businesses, for example, are uh, often just as profitable or more profitable than uh, chip manufacturing. And so in some cases, it's better off to focus uh, on uh, other segments of the supply chain for purely business reasons. The, the second reason why it's important to focus on the entire supply chain is because different countries, I think, have different competitive advantages in different segments. Um, countries with big expertise in, uh, or deep pools of expertise in uh, software design, for example, are probably more likely to be uh, have a compared advantage when it comes to chip design, given the similarities between software design and, and chip design. Whereas companies with big chemicals industries might have a compared advantage in producing chip making chemicals. Uh, as well. And, and no country does the entire supply chain alone. So specialization is inevitably part of the process and thinking about where countries have comparative advantage in specialization is critical. And the third reason is that uh, every other country is devising their own national strategy right now. And so you've got to think not, and so there's competitive dynamics too. You've got to think not just where's your competitive advantage, but also where are other people investing? And does that make a given segment- And where are there gaps? That's right, exactly, exactly. And so that that's a key part of the challenge is looking at the entire competitive landscape. Absolutely. 